Hello and welcome to Take Time. I am your host, Patrick Marlette, a show where we normally talk about watches, but today I'm going to show you how to construct a plumber's pipe table. So folks that regularly watch the program know that I just moved into a lovely two bedroom apartment here in New York City, the second bedroom being converted into a studio space. Coming from a one bedroom apartment, I didn't have the necessary furnishing to fill out the space. So I'm having to start from scratch. The first thing I thought to get was a solid work table or workstation. Now, while looking those up, most of them ran in upwards of 400 to 500 to $600 to get a table appropriate for this space. All of which was just a tad too expensive for my personal taste. So I thought to create a work table for my new studio. However, I didn't know where to start. I knew I wanted something with an industrial look and feel that would fit and work well in this space. It is rather small. However, I didn't really know where to start. So I did a quick Google search and lo and behold, on page numero uno, Home Depot ran an article on how to create a plumber's pipe table. So this is essentially a guide on how to create that very table. Of course, I will leave a link in the description so you can see which article I'm talking about. However, there are a few deviations from what the individual in the article did in constructing her table as opposed to what I'm doing back here. Unfortunately, not all Home Depots are created equal. So I did have to make a few deviations from the instructional you'll find in that link. Namely, this table behind me, or should I say door? So the <laughs> Home Depot I went to doesn't sell butcher blocks, which is what they use, which would have been appropriate counter space for my use. So when I got there, all they had was side panels for the outsides of buildings that were almost rugged enough, but they certainly weren't thick enough to be considered a tabletop. But fortunately enough, in their door section, they happen to have two remaining 36 inch or three foot wide unfinished doors. So I had the boys over at Home Depot cut my three foot wide door into a three by four makeshift tabletop. Now I went ahead and took the liberty of finishing and painting our tabletop so we can just focus on the plumber pipe aspect of our build today. But you'll notice from the images that the sides of the door where it was cut down to four feet had a lot of wood chipping uh, as filler in between the two pieces of wood on the top and or bottom of its panels. I used some plastic wood, wood filler to fill in those gaps because if we just painted over it, it wouldn't allow for a nice even finish. So buy some wood filler, use something akin to a spatula or just a spatula to plaster in that wood filling to fill in the gaps. And then I went ahead and painted over that. I used two coats of bare primer and paint. It's a two one one substance. So you don't have to buy additional primer. I had it finished in this beautiful peanut butter brown. I liked the tone and look of this finishing, so that's what we went with. And it looks like it's good to go, in my opinion, after the two coats. All in all, our Home Depot trip cost $334.31. That's everything from the paint to the tabletop to the plumber's pipes we'll be using to create our base for this table. So without further ado, why don't we get to that? But of course, I wanna take you on a tour of the space. Now this is gonna be pretty quick, so don't blink. Windows, the part of the project there, those pipes and stuff you see, not the bags. Door to the studio. <laughs> studio light so you can see what we're doing. Uh, my other camera, which we'll probably switch to in a second. Part of an entertainment unit I've been using to film up till this point. Wall, wall, to the window, the window again, and an AC the building left me, which was really sweet of them. Now, without further ado, why don't we get to constructing this table? Of course, I'm gonna let you know all the parts I'm using before we begin, but let's switch to our other cam first. All right, so first let's talk about the parts we'll be using. Hi, hello there. Um, the first of which is down there. It looks like a plumber's pipe TP. Of course, I'll get you a close up shot of everything. If you're wondering why they're laying on pillowcases, it's because I wanted to clean off 
all of the grease and little metal bits that were covering the threads on the pipes, they'll get in the way when we're trying to put the flanges and T's that you see down here. They'll get in the way while we're constructing those bits so they won't thread as neatly. So what I did is put them in a pickle bucket or just a big bucket or bin. I used some degreaser soap, filled that up with hot water, gave it all a good rinse. I let that sit for a solid 30 minutes to an hour, and then I dumped out the water, letting these air dry. If there's any bit of moisture left, I'm gonna go ahead and dry that out with a towel. All right, so with all of that in mind, let me go ahead and give you guys a part breakdown. Up front, we have our four floor flanges. This is actually how we'll be connecting our legs to the table top. The thread diameter here is 3 fourths inches, and it's actually clearly indicated on the flanges themselves. Our plumber's TP is made up of 12 inch long black plumber pipes. This will make up the total width of our base. In front of that are six T's, that is how we're connecting all of our joints together. Of course, we have a smaller six inch black plumber's pipe. That is going to connect to a pair of casters on either or end that's gonna allow us to move the table across the space. Here is just one of our four casters. I bought ones with locking mechanisms just in case I'm on either or end of the table and wanted to lock it down. I also bought four 24 inch plumber pipes. This will help to create the height of our table alongside the six inch ones. Lastly, our odds and ends are made up of these wood screws. I bought one and one fourth inch wood screws to make their way into the tabletop. Those will be used on our flanges as well as these eight mending plates. And of course, I'll show you where these guys come in a little bit later. Now, before we begin, I should mention that a few tools may be necessary to complete our project. You might see me using this locking wrench here when handling the pipes. Of course, you can use a vice grip or better yet, a pipe wrench. Also, a power tool will come in handy when we are attaching our base to our tabletop. Oh, one part I forgot to mention is a single 36 inch long plumbing pipe. Of course, I'll leave all the parts I purchased in the description down below if you want to reconstruct this table yourself. But this is actually the pipe we'll be starting our project with as this makes up the length of our base. Now let me just grab that. And this part's pretty easy. We just want to screw this on to the top of our pipe here. Maybe not so easy. Now this is where a locking wrench may come in handy. If we want to tighten this just a little bit more, we'll go ahead and use our wrench. Also, we wanna make sure both ends of our pipe have those T's facing the same direction, obviously, because that is gonna create a nice leveled base for our tabletop. But let's just see how this works first. Let's grab one more. Now I just fixed both ends of our black plumbing pipe with those T's we've been working with. I like the mixed match tone here, and I'm gonna go hyper industrial with our look, keeping the labeling on. I don't have a good adhesive remover in house currently. Later on, I'll go about removing these barcodes, but for now, it doesn't bother me so much. Whew, we need our 12 inch pipes next. Again, these are making up the width of our base. It'll all make sense momentarily once you see this laid out on the ground. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and start tightening these 12 inch pipes to the length of our frame. By the way, I'd recommend using some solid leather work gloves if you wanna keep your hands clean, but I'm here at my house. I'm sure I've got enough soap to handle this little bit of mess. And here we are with our base in place, our 36 inch long pipe connected to our T's and 12 inch pipes to create our total width and length. The next thing we wanna do is take our four additional T's and attach them to the ends of our 12 inch pipes. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for us now. Lastly, I recommend wearing work gloves if only to keep metal filings off of your hands while you work. However, with our pipes clean, it shouldn't be an issue for us, though I do recommend you wear gloves. All right, our base is looking pretty good. Now, let's continue by attaching our 24 inch long pipes to the ends of those tees to create more height for our project table.
All right, everything's looking great. With our 24 inch pipes in place, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten everything up for us to make sure that this is stable. Standing up our base on its side allows us to use this pipe as a basic lever arm to tighten the T even further onto our 12 inch pipe, locking it securely in place. With our legs on their side, I'm gonna attach these flanges where they need to go on our 24 inch long pipes. And with our four flanges in place, you can come a little bit closer, a little bit, a little bit closer. We can attach our six inch pipes to the ends of our tees just here. Now this is the part of the video where we should be attaching these casters to our frame. However, there's just one issue they don't tell you about in that Home Depot tutorial. It's freaking difficult. Whew. Okay, let's talk about some problem solving here. Now in the tutorial for the Home Depot guide on how to make this plumber's pipe table, they suggest using casters like this in your unit. And you fix these onto the pipes here, these six inch pipes at the bottom here with a dowel, uh, much like this. Now what's nice about Home Depot is that they leave out hand saws so you can hack up um, your own wood there if you so choose. So I went ahead and took my dowel and cut up these little inch long blocks. Now what I did from there is I drilled a hole through the base of these dowels, the center rather, so I can fix them onto my casters and then I secured these down with a nut. Now the finished product's gonna look a little something like this. Now I tried this in two different ways. Uh, one where I drilled uh, much too much out of the dowel and it sort of compressed on itself and I wanted that so that I can push this into the base of our table and just have the wood sit there expanded. Uh, this route may require some epoxy, something to just adhere this dowel to the innards of the pipe, um, but I still can't get this to even go in. This route is fine, although they advise getting a file to file out the interior of those six inch pipes uh, I didn't invest in a file and I don't own a file. My other idea here was to just sand this down and continue sanding it until it would somewhat slide in and then using something like a nail punch and a hammer to push this into our base. But as you can tell by the change in our lighting, it's dark out and I have still yet to get these casters into our frame. And I'm no craftsman, I don't consider myself a handyman, but the whole idea of this DIY project is that it's easy enough to do yourself with little to no tools necessary. So we're gonna skip the casters today. I'm just gonna call this a loss. However, I will state that the casters themselves were in the $30 realm. I think it was $37 for these four casters, so. This table's under $300 now, which is great if you are looking to save money. So I'm gonna set these off to the side alongside my receipt for now. Let's go ahead and lay our tabletop flat on the ground and drill our base and legs into it. Now with our tabletop set flat on the ground, we're good to move our legs on top of it. With some measuring tape and a pencil, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure our flanges are lined up perfectly with our table. Our legs measure about 38 inches from center to center, and our table measures four feet long, or 48 inches, the difference being 10. So I know that our legs need to measure out at least five inches from the edges of our table. Now I know that the center of our legs measure 28 inches across, and our table is three feet long, or 36 inches, the difference being eight inches here. So our legs need to rest approximately four inches from the ends of the table. Having marked these points on our table, I am able to project approximately where the centers of our legs should rest on the table top. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and start drilling in each one of these legs. Now, is there a more accurate way to handle this problem? I'm almost certain there is, but I'm quite happy with the results and the table is standing up nice and neat after everything was drilled in.
Okay, so I have a few updates on our project piece. So I took the night off to brainstorm a simpler solution to our caster dilemma here. Now, April Hoff, who did the article for Home Depot on constructing this plumber's pipe table, I think her caster solution is great. It's certainly doable, but it's not the easiest thing for most folks to handle, myself included. I was having a lot of trouble getting that to work for me. I didn't find it to be a viable solution. So to me, I think the caster idea just has to go and trying to keep this within the same realm of expense, it being $350, I came upon this solution instead. So the solution itself was actually quite simple. I bought matching flanges to our six inch pipes at the base and I took um, four inch felt pads instead of the three inch pads I saw at the store because I wanted to cut these down to the full diameter of our flanges. Now, to avoid this, you could just go ahead and buy the three inch felt pads. However, they won't cover up the entire surface area of our flanges here. I wanted to cover up as much of these feet as I could so nothing would have any potential chance of damaging our floors. Uh, the solution was actually quite simple to work out with these pads, I just laid them down. I traced the outline of one of our flanges on all four of our pads, and then I went ahead and used a straight razor to cut around the entirety of that outline. Now you can do the same thing with a pair of scissors. As a matter of fact, this example here I did with scissors, and I kind of wish I did all of them with scissors because it was just easier to guide along that cutting line. It'll also allow you to avoid using any extra piece of wood or cardboard to use that straight knife on when doing this because you don't want to damage the surface of your work area or your floor or whatever you decide to cut these felt pads out with. The next solution I worked out is for these mending plates. When I was back at Home Depot, I went ahead and bought some roofing nails. Now, these mending plates are to accent the corners of our table here. Uh, there's gonna be two per corner, so eight in total. Uh, the idea is to give it a nice industrial look, although not child safe. But initially I was gonna use those wood screws we purchased, but I find that screws have the tendency to work objects one way or another. I feel like I'm gonna get a more exact fit with a nice pair of nails. And our roofing nails back here have the largest diameter head you can find, practically speaking, at least at Home Depot that I saw. I bought two inch long nails to make certain that these stay put when we place them on the edges of our table. Now the biggest expense I made when returning to Home Depot was on this Milwaukee 14 inch steel pipe wrench. Now I could have spent less, but this stated it was made in America and I like supporting our local economy. So I bought this one. Um, plus I've heard good things about Milwaukee tools. I've never owned one. Um, I've actually used this particular tool already to adjust the six inch pipes at the ends of our legs here to get this to fit nice and flush against the floor so it's not wobbling anymore. I was going to try this, because I own this and it's in my home, but it did nothing. So if you're gonna work with pipes, I highly recommend you buy a pipe wrench. It just makes sense. It's easy to clean up and it's gonna do the exact job you're looking for. So if you have a lot of plumbing pipe projects in the pipeline, I would advise you get a nice pipe wrench. Now my goal was to keep this within the $350 I initially had spent. Again, we spent $334.31, I believe. Um, after I returned the casters that didn't work initially, after all of the new purchases, we've spent $63.00. In total, we're still right around that $350 range. Again, you could have purchased a much cheaper pipe wrench. I believe Husky was making products that were available at Home Depot as well. Um, I just went for the best one I could find. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and attach these flanges to the legs of our table so we can get going on the rest of our project and see the finished results.
Oh, I didn't see you there. I was setting off some emails on my new table. Speaking of which, here it is, complete and ready for action, whatever action you had intended for it. So is it possible to create a workbench for yourself with a butcher block and some pipes, or in this instance, a door? Well, the answer is yes. I love that Home Depot and April Hoff posted this solution on their website for those of you looking to create your own table for any space in your house. I'd been wanting to make a plumber's pipe table for some time and I didn't realize how many solutions would pop up over on Google. I'm so glad I looked into it and was able to find a great resource and a rather affordable solution to this desk dilemma of mine. So if you too wanted to make a pipe table, I'm here to let you know it doesn't have to be a pipe dream. It can very much be a reality. I am very happy with the results of my table. We'll see if it stands the test of time, but I think this is a far better solution than spending 500 or more on a table and having it shipped. It's not even talking about shipping costs having that shipped to you instead of just constructing it yourself. And again, I only spent around $350 for the total parts and supplies to include the tools I used to the tabletop and pipes that all went into constructing this table. Now, I don't actually own a car here in New York, so I did have to take a few cars here and there from Home Depot to my house. So factoring that in, I spent just under $400 to construct this table to my specifications. And to me, that's worth it. And now I have a brand new table I can shoot content on here in my new apartment. And that makes me extremely happy knowing that the solution was not only immediately available, but actually really easy to do by myself. Now, I still have a lot of work to do to getting this space to look like a proper studio, but with the tools in hand and the proper know-how, I think I can tackle on those next few projects. I'm looking to create an industrial stylized bookshelf as well as shelving units for basic storage in the space, get some of my things off the ground here and make more workable space. So if you'd like to see me film those projects or you found a guide online that you'd like to see someone else tackle that you feel would be appropriate for my space, let me know. I'd be more than happy to tackle it and film it for you guys to see if it's possible. Again, I'm not the greatest handyman in the world, but I'm a can-do person and I think you guys can do this stuff too. Now gang, if you found this video enlightening, useful, or in the least entertaining, feel free to hit that like button. It looks a whole heck of a lot like this guy. If you have friends, forums, or groups that were interested in constructing the same table I did here on the show today, feel free to share this video with them if they're looking to problem solve some of the issues I ran into with that same article, maybe this will work as a helpful guide for them. Also, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I normally do watch reviews over here on Take Time, but I do have a few more project pieces in mind to not only fill this space, but my living room as well. If you'd like to join along for that ride, feel free to hit that subscribe button, or if you're interested in watch content, feel free to hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to see when my videos come out, you can hit the bell icon just next to that. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette, and thank you for the time. <laughs> I really love this thing. I love a good tool. Something about fixing a problem with your own hands is just so satisfying. I had no idea how much I needed this until I needed it, and then, ugh, just thank you. Thank you, Milwaukee. Thank you.